of you probably don't know me. My name's Amber and I'm another part of Mountain Readiness. Today I'm here with Lori Valone, author and owner of Bacchus. I hope I'm saying that right. USA yep. Publications. She's written Building Food Security and she will be at the Mountain Readiness Expo May 5th, 6th, and 7th in Harmony, North Carolina to teach you all about building food security. And Lori, food security is so important especially right now at a time we're in our own backyard almost in a, in ohio um you know we don't know what the long-term ratifications from that that train derailment are going to be so food security is really a big deal absolutely <clears throat> it it probably never more than it is right now. Uh, events like that, um, natural disasters, um, just supply chain issues that we've been seeing. Um, back when the pandemic started, I live in a very small mountain town, and uh, but we are a tourist area. And when the pandemic started, within the space of about 12 hours, our only local grocery store was wiped out. I mean, there was not a stitch of bread in the store. There was no produce. There was no meat. There was nothing because it was like locusts had depend, descended on the store and wiped it out. Yes. It's happening more and more and more often. And so you can't depend on the things that you always thought would be there to be around when you need it. Or you, you can't depend on, can I get to a store? You know, if you have a train derailment and suddenly you are um, under quarantine orders, um, you may not be able to get to the store. And so many people today live just in time. They think, oh, I'll just run down to the store tonight. I mean, I, I used to do it. We, we were um, living in a, in a um, city in Cornelius and a grocery store was a quarter mile away. And, you know, it's like, oh, what are we for dinner tonight? I'll run down to the store and get what we need. And um, our habits changed dramatically when we moved to the top of a mountain and the nearest store is 20 minutes away. And so you have to start to think longer term. And the more you do that, the more you appreciate the need to have food on hand. And so that was part of the genesis of writing Building Food Security. Absolutely. Um, just today, I spent $5 on one head of cauliflower, and I cannot even believe I bought it. Um, but that is my own fault because I didn't grow enough. And if I did grow it, then the, the food storage is really a big deal that comes into play. How are you going to preserve you know, the labors? So I know you're going to be teaching that as well at the Mountain Readiness Expo. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely a number of ways to preserve food. Certainly, you know, in some cases, there's no substitute for fresh. You know, I mean, when you want, I, I was in the same boat. I looked at getting cauliflower. Um, my husband likes to snack on it fresh mm -hmm. and he dips it in salsa and, you know, and it's yeah. a nice, healthy, low calorie snack. Well, you know, they were wanting here i think it was seven dollars for a head and they looked horrible they were brown they were small they were ugly and i i just couldn't do it i said you know i, I actually came home and said i was gonna buy you a head of cauliflower but it just looked too awful um <clears throat> but you know there we can dehydrate we can um canning for snacking, you probably, you're going to lose the texture there, you know, better for, for using in other things, for mashing, for doing other things with. Freeze drying has turned out to be a wonderful way to be able to preserve food for snacking, especially. Um, green beans that have been freeze dried are, are an excellent snack. Um, you, can, you can do so many things with, uh, with freeze dryer that you can't necessarily do with dehydrating or do with canning. So it gives you another alternative. Now, not everybody's going to run out and buy a freeze dryer. And that's why there's multiple methods. And that's why I try to, to teach multiple methods, because for some folks, um, dehydrating is the best. There are forms of dehydrating that you can do that do not require any additional equipment than you probably already have in your house. You now, you mm -hmm. can oven dehydrate. You can sun dehydrate. 
And some of those are, you know, excellent grid down methods that you can use. So um, having multiple methods at your disposal is really important. And canning is, is definitely one of those because first thing I'm gonna do if the lights go off is I'm gonna start canning everything that's in my deep freeze so that I don't- Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and like you said, you know, every different food preservation, preservation method has a pro and a con. You know, canning, you have to use a safe tested recipe Whereas freeze drying, you can freeze dry your leftovers if you want, and they'll be good for, I think, 25 years. Yeah, uh, as long as they're uh, properly stored. Yeah, 25 years. And there's things like eggs. You can't dehydrate an egg safely. Mm -hmm. um, you can, and I, I've got um, a lot of, of eggs dehydrated and we, excuse me, freeze dry. We use them all the time. We'll use them for, you know, to make breakfast. We ran out of eggs and you know, we want scrambled eggs and or for baking or for, so they're, they're good to just plain have on hand, but you can't do that with dehydrate them. And right. so that's where some of that, that flexibility comes in. Um, one of the, the, the coolest things I think I've um, done freeze dried has been uh, watermelon. Tastes like hot candy after you're done. Really? With it. Concentrates the sugar in it. And it's, uh, it's such a good snack that I can never manage to get it into my food storage because I always wind up eating it before it gets there. Well, I'm going to have to try that myself. Um, I'm always looking for, for a sweet snack in the evening time. So it's that perfect. Would be good. Well, we are really excited to have you with us at the Expo. Um, we are just thrilled you guys are going to be there, and I'm sure that you're going to share so much vital information with everyone throughout your classes. If you guys want to get a jump start on this knowledge, look for Building Food Security. I'll put a link to it down in the comments and you guys can go ahead and get that purchased right now and get a jump start before the expo. That's great. I really appreciate that. I'm, I'm really looking forward to being there and uh, teaching people how to both plan for their food storage and some of the methods that they can use to be able to do food storage. It's kind of my, my basic message is learn, plan, and act. That's a good message for sure. So thank you so much, Lori. Thanks for having me and look forward to seeing you in a couple months. Mm -hmm.